This evening, you know what we like to do? Jump right back into this past weekend. We had the long-awaited, highly anticipated Bellator Dynamite. I mean, I, I think that's pretty fair to say, right? A lot of people were expecting this to be a big event. They were excited for it. It was. It was a big event. I have to give it up to Scott Coker. He really knows how to, to piece it together and capture that casual fan. Because let's be honest. 10 times as many casual fans as there are hardcore fans. You know what I'm saying? You want to get that WWE, SmackDown, whatever, that crossover, right? So it makes sense. I like the presentation. It had the big flair and the bling bling to it. Some people don't care about that, but I think the casual fan definitely likes that. I think it's cool. It's, it's something exciting. So they had a one-night four-man tourney with... The homecoming of Mr. Wonderful, Phil Davis, Linton Vassell, King Mo, and former champion, Emmanuel Newton. Pretty much went like I thought it would. I thought King Mo was kind of the dark horse to look out for. Unfortunately, he gets a rib injury, but only after defeating Linton Vassell. Mr. Wonderful, Phil Davis, he came in and made a statement. He basically comes in. First round finishes off Emmanuel Newton and then comes in. He ends up fighting uh, Francis Carmont, Carmont for the alternate because both King Mo and Linton could not proceed because they were injured. Although I've heard there's some, some uh, controversy on Linton's behalf. He wasn't necessarily injured and could have proceeded. I don't know all the details. I kind of read something about that nature in social media but that is neither here nor there right now because mr davis ends up winning the tourney two first round finishes um kudos hats off to mr wonderful so this is the thing liam mcgeary defended his title against tito ortiz for the main event that night and yes he finishes tito Tito looked like Tito of old came in, got to take down, grind him out, pretty much a dominating first round, only to give up an inverted triangle right towards the end of round one and gets submitted. I felt bad. You know, I kind of wanted to see Tito get that strap again, but are we going to see him in the old uh, circled cage again or the decagon or the octagon or whatever cage we might be using? Who knows? We'll have to see. Uh, but I think the true test is yet to come to see what Liam McGarry really has. Don't get me wrong, undefeated fighter. He's been holding his own, but I don't think he's truly been tested. Come on, Tito, 40 years old, definitely past his prime. No disrespect to that man. Arguably one of the best in the ground and pound on top position ever. And that's what he was doing for the first four minutes of the round, roughly. Um, so, I still think the test is yet to come for McGarry. And that test is going to be in the way of Mr. Wonderful Phil Davis when he gets to fight for that strap come early next year or whenever they set it up. I think that's when it's set up for early next year. So, we'll see what happens. And then that's going to really let us know if the UFC is just leagues above all the other promotions as far as the talent pool or... Do they have some legitimate fighters? I personally think there's a lot of legitimate fighters in World Series of Fighting, Legacy, Titan, Bellator. It's just they have less of many high-talented fighters. That's where I think the difference is. The UFC pool, way deeper. Deeper bench. The other promotions, you've got you know one, two, three top guys in each weight class. And then after that, you've got you know decent fighters, not you know elite world level. So, with that being said, we'll see what happens when Mr. Davis takes on Liam, whenever that fight is, for the light heavyweight strap. So, that was this past weekend, San Jose. 
The day before, had a great time. I got to hang out, went to the weigh-ins with Team Living Fat, Jim and Heidi. We got to hang out to the weigh-ins. And then my boy from Fanboy Nation, he made the trip up from SoCal, and he had a little extra spot on the uh, fanfare. So we got to geek out and be fanboys. But who wouldn't, man? You get to meet Fedor, Frank Shamrock, Kung Lee, Randy Couture, Sakuraba, and Hoist Gracie. I mean... Six of those six guys in the same room. Even other fighters were geeking out. I mean, that's all. That's it's a lot of big names right there. So it was exciting. It was fun. We had a great time. So thank you again, Mr. Samo, for uh, inviting me out to that wonderful evening. I much appreciate it. That's not all we had on that Friday night besides the Wayne and the fanfare. We also had the World Series of Fighting. They had their card down in. Arizona main event rematch of Palomino against Gagey. Kind of went like I anticipated. Gagey stays undefeated. He retains the strap. But David Branch, he, get, he got to fight against Teddy Holder for the open light heavyweight title. Now he is a two-division champion. He's got the middleweight title and the light heavyweight title. That's a pretty elite group. Not too many people can say that they've held two, title, uh, two titles at all let alone two titles and two weight divisions at the same exact time. That is pretty insane. And I don't care if it's the World Series of Fighting promotion. That's arguably number three. So even at number three, you're holding two belts. Kudos to that man right there. So David Branch, good job. Look to see what else you got coming up. We're very excited to see that. Now, let's jump into this coming weekend. We got the two for Sutherland. AKA Kiefer Sutherland, the twofer. You know what I'm saying? We have on Friday night, we got Bellator down in Tejas. And then on Saturday, we have the UFC Fight Night on Fox Sports 1 in Japan. Let's talk about Bellator first. Let's start with the co main event. We got two UFC vets, Joey Beltran against Kendall Grove. This fight right here, both these guys have seen a lot of wars, a lot of battles. Joey always brings it. I don't even know who to pick in this fight. I, I really want to say whoever shows up and wants it more. Joey, in the last five years, since September of 2010, he's only gotten four wins. He did have a fifth win. That ended up being a no contest after he ended up testing for banned substances. But as far as his record is concerned, only four wins in five years. And that's out of 12 fights, I think. I think it's like eight and four or something of that nature. So that's a very uh, rocky road. Kendall's been going through some patches back and forth, too. I think they've both seen about the equal level of competition, both being in the highest league at UFC, now both the Bellator. I really can't make a pick on this. In my mind, it's a coin toss. I think whoever shows up and wants it more is going to win this fight. So that's how I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to make a pick on this one. Main event, we've got the self-proclaimed baddest man on the planet, Joe Warren, against L.C. Davis. I'll tell you this, L.C. Davis has almost three times the experience of Joe Warren, but Joe Warren is a grinder, and if he can impose his will and do what he wants to do and play his game and use his wrestling, it's going to be a long night for L.C. These guys are both grinders. L.C. started off in, in his career, he went nine wins with zero losses for his first nine fights, and eight of those first eight, they were finishes, but since his ninth win, he has very few finishes. He's been grinding out decisions, and maybe that's because the level of competition has gotten greater. Joe Ward's the same thing. He only has a few finishes himself, and most of them are grinding out decisions. So in my mind, both of these are grinders. And in my mind, Joe Warren is the higher-tiered grinder. I know that Elsie's played this game a lot longer, and he's probably faced more opponents, although I think Joe Warren has faced higher-caliber opponents being a previous world champion and whatnot in the Bellator division. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, but I would have to take Warren on this fight for a grind-out, five-round, unanimous decision. That's how I call it. All right, so let's get back to the next night. Saturday, that's going to be UFC Fight Night in Japan. It's on Fox Sports 1. I believe the prelims are on Fox Sports 2. Early prelims on UFC Fight Pass. So I want to go with the two main fights, which is the co-main event, main event. Co-main event, you got Uriah Hall versus Grigard Mursasi. I can never pronounce names. Grigard? I think it's Grigard Mursasi. We'll just call him Greg. That's his, uh, that's his adopted 
American name, Greg Musasi. In any case, Uriah Hall, he's had some issues in the past of pulling the trigger. He looked so great on the Ultimate Fire, especially with this highlight reel, roundhouse spinning kick knockout to the dome to uh, Adam Sella. I think it was Adam Sella. That's off the top of my head. In any case, since he's been into the UFC, he's had some, some decent fights, but I think he has not lived up to his expectations or our expectations and maybe even his expectations and blossom into this dominating fighter that we all thought he would be based upon what we saw in the house on Ultimate Fighter. The Saucy, he's been around the block and he's been around the block many times. You're talking former Pride champion, former Strike Force champion. He's fought pretty much the who's who. This is going to be a tough night for Uriah Hall. I'd like to see him get the win. He likes to stay on the feet, keep it striking. But in honesty, I see Musasi taking this to the ground and possibly getting a submission on Hall. That's what I'm going to go with. Submission, Musasi. You heard it first from Mighty. All right, main event. You got main country Roy Nelson against Josh Barnett. Josh Barnett, definitely a huge following in Japan. This is another fight, I think, whoever wants to impose their will more. Nelson's chin is definitely not holding up as well as it used to be, getting knocked in it so many times. Josh is on a, on a tear right now. I think Nelson is a little more on rocky grounds. It could definitely go anywhere. Roy has huge knockout power. Uh, Nelson's no slouch on the ground, though, so if Josh takes this down on the ground... Nelson has submissions off his back. I know he's not the most agile person in the world, but the dude has some crafty skills. Don't let his petite physique fool you. So, God, I really don't know who to take. I think I want to go. I think I want to go with Josh Barnett on this, but I'm not real confident in that. I am confident in Musasi, not so confident in Barnett. I think that one could go either way. I hope to see a good fight. That's really all I care about. So that's what I want to see. As long as we get a good fight, that's all That's all I care about. So that's what I'm going to go with. That is your fights for this weekend, the twofer. That's Friday and Saturday. Hope you enjoy them. You got both of them are virtually free as long as you have extended cable, I guess. Spike on Friday for Bellator. Fox Sports 1 on Saturday for UFC. Hope you enjoy some fights. I appreciate you guys. Give me love, watch me every week, listen to my jackassery, putting up with my madness, and give me the love all over social media as you do. Thank you so much. This is Mighty. Thanks for watching.